It's just a, it's, it's like a whole environmental thing. It helps people understand that, you know, every, every third mouthful you take is due to honeybees, although I don't usually say that to people. Um, and it's, it's just an awareness of, of beekeeping and bees and how important they are to the environment. California needs um, 2.4 million beehives just to pollinate their almonds, and they don't have them all in California. So they bring them in from Georgia and Florida and wherever for five or six weeks. And then they move them to, let's say, Washington for apples and Florida for the oranges or in Georgia for the peaches and Maine for the blueberries. Right now, what action are they doing? Like <clears throat> well, all of, this, all of this brown underneath here yep. is broods. It's bees ready to emerge. They're supposed to keep that brood chamber, 93 degrees. Wow. So if they have them during the middle of the winter, it's pretty hard to have a lot of bees coming out. Yeah. Because insects are amazing. Um, and insects are the most biodiverse group of animals out there. And I think people don't think about them all that much or don't think about them in a favorable way all of the time. They're obviously like charismatic insects, like butterflies and dragonflies. Uh, and honeybees, but the whole ecosystems around us are dependent on the entire biodiversity of insect life, from the tiniest little beetles to the big old grasshoppers around us to even even those mosquitoes and, and the ticks as well. So we're out here just getting people excited about insects, thinking about insects in uh, creative ways through our crafts, uh, exploratory ways with the Bug Safari and the Black River Action Team who are here, um, and the artistic ways. We're hosting um, uh, two lovely artists who do work with um, pollinators uh, and watercolors and things like that. Cockroaches are technically older than T-Rex. And if you go back to when T-Rex were walking around the earth, you flip over a log, there's gonna be cockroaches that look just like this under there. Cockroaches have not changed how they look in almost 200 million years. They can also survive two weeks without their head. If a predator bites their head off, they can survive no problem, because it turns out cockroaches don't have a lot going on up here. Insects kind of have a variety of different jobs, you could say, that they do in the environment. The first and foremost is the one that most people think about is they are eaten by other larger animals. Um, but pollination is another big thing. They spread um, material from plant to plant to ensure that plants can flower and produce fruit and other kinds of foods that we depend on and that other animals depend on as well. Um, and as being the basis for this like whole other uh, energy levels and trophic levels of life to exist, if you think about it, if there weren't any insects, there could not be any more complicated life on our planet. They're ancient, you know, they've been around uh, many insects for hundreds of millions of years, much, much longer than mammals and birds and, and even reptiles. So they're a crucial part of the, of the earth that we are still learning about all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do my hair today. <laughs> I've got quite the assembly process. Oh yeah. Nice. Skill right there. Oh, that's a good question. I was just up at the bug safari with Mal and um, all of our students who come with their uh, bug nets have been catching these little stripy yellow and black beetles. And Mal looked it up and it's very difficult to tell the difference between the cucumber beetle, the potato beetle and the leaf beetle. So now I'm like trying to figure out like, oh, well, we should get those three different kinds of plants and see which ones these, these beetles prefer. Cause I'm a behavioral ecologist and I like thinking about things like that. <laughs> And there should be a bunch all over this plant. I'm not really sure how many we put out, so good luck finding them. Oh, what's in here? Oh, Willie, that's big. This is a pretty big caterpillar, and it uses a really bright color to tell us not to touch it. Yeah, we'll keep those. And this caterpillar, the caterpillar of the frosty dolphin, can eat the leaves of the wild indigo or Lucinus perennis. That's one way to find caterpillars too, is to look for their feet. This is a, a Cecropia moth caterpillar. So it's one of the biggest caterpillars we still have around here. There's one here. Um, so actually, they the live mostly on plants? Have. Yes. What's uh, the butterfly? Yes. So this one is going to become um, this moth right here. Oh, wow. And it's actually going to be about twice as big as the photo. 
These are nice. at their largest, eight inches from wingtip to wingtip. So about wow. like both of my hands kind of together. Wow. I've never seen that one one that big in the wild, but they do get like larger than lunar mobs. So if you find a really nice wild female, they're gonna be huge mobs. Well, there we go. I have not named this guy yet. I probably should. He's pretty chill though. He's just hanging Cody. out. Cody. What's his name? Cody. Cody. All right. Cody. Hi, Cody. Yeah. We got. Do I have an ant somewhere too? Oh, <laughs> look at that. Is that the outside? And that's creepy. Ready? Sometimes we pick up these pupa. Wait, what? What's in there? So this is the the living animal itself. This is the sort of intermediate stage between a yeah. caterpillar and a moth. Thank you. And if you choose the right one. Oh, yeah. Uh, a little bit. Sometimes they'll wiggle their body. They're in there, you know. So that's the thing. There's actually there's nothing in here except for the eternal organs. So this is we're looking at the skin of the animal itself. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Bye, Cody. You guys are out of here. All right. If you go around and you find um, another a dragonfly or a damselfly, so dragonflies are the big, robust, beefy types of critters, right? If people are curious about learning more about insect biodiversity, there are a lot of different online resources. If you are uh, at a loss for where to go and where to be directed, you can always reach out to us at VINS at uh, info at vinsweb.org and we might be able to supply you with some great uh, links to keep exploring. Does that make saluna moth? So that makes the, the cecropia uh, okay. Out looking, you might see some of those moths or butterflies. If I saw that in the wild, I don't know what I would do. I'd have to run away. Well, we've also got the, the tiger swallowtails on here. Oh, look at that. Cool little snake mimic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it's got little eyes. Doesn't it? And where's the eyes in this big one?